form to a liquid form. Now realize, solid form uh, happens to be a form with lower entropy. It's more arranged. In the solid form, in, in that state of matter, any substance, in solid form it's supposed to be more arranged and in fluid form it's going to have higher entropy. Fair enough? So solid form is about closer and a more organized arrangement of molecules. Closer and a more organized arrangement of molecules. Now in general molecules which are a little unsymmetrical. Molecules which are a little unsymmetrical. Which are anti sort of are better fitted are better fitted in a crystalline lattice those molecules with an anti structure with a theta meta structure a zigzag structure are going to fit better in a crystalline lattice uh, very strange analog while packing clothes in a suitcase we always tend to sort of, uh, we, we tie them and then we place them in a suitcase. Uh, so that's the general conventional practice, you know. So you know you can accommodate more garments in a suitcase if you tie them up and then you place it in a, in a suitcase. So similarly, a zigzag arrangement is always going to be preferred when it comes to arranging it in a crystalline lattice, when it comes to arranging it in a crystalline lattice or when it comes to arranging it in a more arranged solid form a structure enjoying a zigzag nature is going to have higher melting point is going to have higher melting point and that's why when it comes to melting point cis will have lower melting point than trans <coughs> we want to see this time and again more zigzag orientation and the compound will have higher melting point fair enough now some physical some physical properties on ground of which I can differentiate a cis and a trans isomer. Is this clear to all of you? Is this clear to all of you? Now what I gave you now, the cis having higher dipole moment and more boiling point and solubility and the melting point of the trans form is higher, is considering a general cis uh, and trans alkene. Considering a normal general cis and trans alkene. I would want this to be very properly ensconced in your mind. I want you to relate uh, to all the difference in physical parameters which I gave you before I shatter it, before I uh, talk of a molecule where the reverse of this will be true. But before that I hope you have understood this, you hope you have, you have understood this for gen general cis and trans compound. The one having more dipole is going to have higher boiling point and more solubility and it's supposed to be less stable with more heat of hydrogenation. Is it understood by all of you? But it's not going to be always true. You know, it's not going to be always true. In the sense, I told you I was talking about a general uh, cis or trans form. 1 to dichloro 18 or cis and trans butene, you know, similar effects, similar effects in opposite direction again here 2 CS3 with plus I effect 2 CS3 with plus I effect 2 CS3 with plus I effect will have more dipole moment in the cis form and this would tend to cancel out this would tend to cancel out this would tend to cancel out if they are arranged uh, anti in a trans geometry so for general compounds cis form is going to have hard dipole moment you see this whether it's it's moving away from the group if it's a plus I effect or if it's a minus I effect at the same time it's not always true it's not always true in the sense suppose I have a compound or if I have these two geometrical isomers I have 2 3 dichloro 2 butene now for 2 3 dichloro 2 butene for 2 3 dichloro 2 butene 
we switch it off and don't switch it on again again do you agree this is the shift and transform the shift and the transform shift and transform of the molecule 2 3 dichloro 2 butene 2 3 dichloro 2 butene Now, you know it has plus i effect and alkyl group has plus i effect alkyl group has plus i effect now when it says and transform I want to draw another structure. Again, I know I can just wipe it this way, but you'll have to put a little more effort. So I want to draw a different structure. I'm sorry. Suppose we have a compound like this. Now, this is not uh, this is not butene. This is uh, one chloropropene. This is one chloropropene. One chloropropene. Fine. These are the two structures. Now, this is the fifth form. This is the fifth form. See, sir. Now, this is with respect to the two hydrogen atom. It fits with respect to the two hydrogen atom. Fine. And this is the transform again with respect to the two hydrogen atoms. But I have been able to draw a molecule. I have been able to draw a molecule where I figure that this with a plus i effect, this with a plus i effect, and this with a minus i effect. Yet again, in the trans isomer, this with a plus i effect and this with a minus i effect. This time, now what I what I did before, what I explored before, I told you was for general alkenes, but I told you it's not going to be always true. I can have a structure like this. I can have a situation like this: one chloropropene, one chloropropene. And tell me now whether the cis form or the trans form is going to have hard dipole. Transform. Now, first of all, it's cis and trans with respect to the hydrogen atoms. So, I'm going to call this cis and transform only. Now, here you see the plus i and minus i effect are not complementing each other. Whereas in the transform, in the transform, plus i of CH3, plus i of CH3, and minus i of Cl, they're complementing each other. They're complementing each other. So. I told you in general the cis form is going to have hard dipole moment. The cis form is going to have hard dipole moment, but there might be structures, there might be cases where the trans form will have hard dipole moment. The trans form will have hard dipole moment. And if the trans form has hard dipole moment, you know, things are going to change then. The one with, with more dipole moment is going to be uh, the one which is less stable and more soluble and with more boiling point although if it's just like uh, cis isomer has higher boiling point than trans isomer if they ask you whether it's true or false it's true because then you're talking of just a general cis or trans alkene fine if they ask you which has a higher melting point cis or trans it's trans which has higher stability cis or trans trans which is more soluble higher boiling point cis so in general you believe the cis form will have hard dipole moment but there could be cases where you understand that the trans form the trans form is having a more defined dipole moment the trans form is having a more defined dipole moment now till now we have been talking only about physical properties we have been differentiating and comparing them on physical parameters 
of couple of chemical properties maybe and for that although no the cis and transforms the cis and transforms are going to have same chemical properties until and unless i'm talking of a reaction which is stereo specific or stereo selective i'm going to define these terms for you later on stereo specific and stereo selective but these are going to be cases where the structure of the molecule the structure of the reagent will dictate the course of the process fine but if it's not stereo specific or stereo selective then cis and trans uh, you know with the same position of pi bond and the same functional group might have so many similar chemical properties they are expected to have so many similar chemical properties you know because both are alkenes and they have the same position as well so they'll have so many chemical properties in common maybe for a particular case for a few cases they'll have different chemical properties which could be utilized to identify which is the cis form and which is the trans form of uh, that compound now who will tell me how is this molecule commonly named as for well, it is called malic acid this is malic acid and the corresponding trans form the corresponding trans form you know is going to look like this the corresponding trans form is going to look like this and what's just called fumaric acid fumaric acid now how could you recall one isomer and not the other one hmm okay but now you understand this is malic acid and this is fumaric acid same formula the cis isomer is called malic acid the trans isomer is called fumaric acid when i was a student i always thought it's stayed off it fumes fumaric theek hai now if you treat both of them with a dehydrating agent concentrated h2so4 or actually p2o5 is a better choice a dehydrating agent if you treat them with a dehydrating agent p2o5 now you know di acids di acids if you have attended the class on nomenclature di acids can produce cyclic anhydride it can produce cyclic anhydride now with malic acid with malic acid right away you'll have a cyclic anhydride form reason being both cooh are on the same side of the pi bond both cooh are on the same side of the pi bond so using a dehydrating agent using a dehydrating agent the p2o5 it will easily lose water it will easily lose water the cis form will easily lose water forming this anhydride you must have noticed this in the class on nomenclature an oxygen between two carbonyls an oxygen between two carbonyls is how you identify an anhydride okay again expressing the position of the hydrogen atom you know is oxygen So malic acid in presence of a dehydrating agent can easily can easily give you uh, malic anhydride malic anhydride because the two COH groups are on the same side of the pi bond whereas the fumaric acid the trans isomer on heating or with a dehydrating agent will produce no anhydride will produce no anhydride again the trans isomer will produce no anhydride because you know the two cooh groups are on either side of the pi bond they're far enough they're distant enough to have a mole of water removed using both of them so there could be some chemical test so this particular pair of isomers the cis form is going to easily produce the cis form is going to easily produce and hydride the trans isomer will not produce an anhydride fair enough malic acid forms malic anhydride fumaric acid doesn't form fumaric anhydride that readily can we move on then you know they have carboxylic acid group the named acids so they can lose h plus yes or no 
which carboxyl groups they called acids so they can lose h plus and again because they have two hydrogen atoms two carboxyl groups two replaceable hydrogen atoms they can lose two h plus they can lose two h plus now they going to be weak acids they're going to be weak acids i told you between organic and inorganic acids organic acids are always going to be weaker acids organic bases are going to be weaker bases they're not going to be as strong as their inorganic counterparts so if they are acids and if they are weak acids will have dissociation constant coming into frame ka so they'll have a ka1 and ka2 ka1 and ka2 now when it's ka1 and ka2 i'm talking of dissociation constant i'm talking of an equilibria i'm talking of ionic equilibria where i know for a given acid for a given acid the acidity will be more the acidity will be more if the base is more stable say yes or no the acidity is more if the base is more stable if the base is more stable the equilibrium moves more towards the right side produces more h plus and that also means that ka value is higher that also means that ka value is higher I repeat, they are uh, geometrical isomers, dicarboxylic. If I talk of K1, if I talk of K1, who will tell me the K1 value, which is going to have higher K1, malic acid or fumaric acid, and why? K1 is about losing first H plus. K1 is about losing first H plus. Because it's symmetrical, you can take out H plus from any of the carboxyl group. Now, when it loses H plus, this is going to be the maleate anion. This is going to be the maleate anion. Sodium or potassium maleate. Huh? Now, if it's the cis form, if it's the cis form, where the two COOH groups are sent to each other, the same set of the pi bond this negative could be stabilized by hydrogen bonding it could be stabilized by hydrogen bonding it could be stabilized by hydrogen bonding you understand me malic acid is more acidic than fumaric acid malic acid is more acidic than fumaric acid because in malic acid you have two COH groups on the same set of the pi bond you have two COH groups on the same side of the pi bond. Okay? And if that's the case, if one loses H plus, if one loses H plus, the corresponding anion is stabilized by hydrogen bonding with another COH group. Again, it's possible only if the two are on the same side because in fumaric acid, that's not possible. That's not possible. If this loses one H plus, now this negative cannot be stabilized by hydrogen bonding with this COH. Now you call this intramolecular hydrogen bonding, you call this intramolecular hydrogen bonding, that's also called chelation. So let's know between malic acid and fumaric acid, malic acid is more acidic, the K1 value of malic acid is higher because malleate anion, because malleate anion is more stable than fumarate anion, malleate anion is more stable than fumarate anion because The stable bond O O minus could be stabilized by. Now it's going to look more realistic. Yes or no? <coughs> CO minus with the COH showing intramolecular hydrogen bonding chelation that stabilizes. You know, hydrogen bonding stabilizes the molecule. So because the anion is stabilized, because the anion is stabilized, the equilibrium shifts towards the right. Yes or no? All of you understand me? I want you to reply to all such questions. So the ion is stabilized. So that means K1 of malic acid is more than K1 of fumaric acid. Fine.
K1. So M now this stands for malic acid. Capital F stands for fumaric acid. So K1 malic acid is more than K1 fumaric acid. And which will have a higher K2 value? Which will have a higher K2 value? Fumaric acid. Now you understand that's that's quite uh, expected. And that's also uh, that's also going, going to make all our explanations and our discussions so authentic because I was expecting this hydrogen atom to be involved in hydrogen bonding with the anion of another carboxyl group. That's exactly what's happening because now it's difficult to take out this H plus. While talking of K2, while talking of K2, I'm talking of the removal of the second H plus. Now because that's involved in hydrogen bonding, it was stabilizing the first anion, it was increasing K1 of malic acid but because of the same factor loss of the second hydrogen from the second carboxyl group is going to be difficult is going to be difficult for malic acid so when it comes to k2 k2 of malic acid is going to be less than k2 of fumaric acid we begin have studied in the past generally most of the times illustrations which i give in the class are important, they are significant both for the sake of learning as well as uh, various exams. Fair enough, we'll have questions coming so many times from the illustrations I have been giving you in the class. Hope you are noting down everything and understanding everything. We move on then. Okay? Hydrogen is attached to? Yeah, so is attached to a carbon. That is that. Oh, yes. Yeah. There is also hydrogen there, but it is not for uh, forming hydrogen bonds because uh, this hydrogen is attached to carbon, which is really basically hydrogen. So, you want to ask me why this hydrogen is not involved in, in hydrogen bonding? Huh? Fine. Uh, I, I thought you were trying to. to Explain something. Uh -huh. uh, we'll answer this. Why this hydrogen is not involved in hydrogen bonding? This hydrogen is not close enough. Even your answer is not close enough to the correct answer. <laughs> yes? Why this hydrogen is not involved in hydrogen bonding? Huh? You can take your seat. See who will tell me. Yes, this is what I told you while discussing hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine. Hydrogen bonded to very electronegative element will be positive enough to interact with the negative end of another molecule. So this is neither oxygen nor nitrogen nor fluorine. You getting me? Hydrogen attached to oxygen, nitrogen or fluorine can participate in hydrogen bonding. All this should be in place. All this should be in place. Okay? So let's move on. There could be more than one pi bond in the molecule. You understand? There could be more than one pi bond. In the sense, it could be a diene. It could be a diene. Now in case of a diene, in case of a diene, suppose I draw a structure like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, I'm going to call this one four heptadiene. I'm going to call this one four heptadiene. Really, you know, I'm not very interested in naming this molecule right now. There are two pi bonds. If there are two pi bonds, there will be cis and trans geometries exhibited with respect to both the pi bonds. Around both pi bonds, you'll have the cis and trans isomerism. So maybe I can talk of a compound like this. This is one particular representation. This is one particular representation where around this pi bond, it's cis or trans. Tell me. 
around this 5 minutes to so trans says around this 5 minutes to so trans so can i call this uh cis cis isomer this can be called a cis cis isomer then i could have drawn it in this way now tell me around this pi bond is it cis or trans trans this is trans around this pi bond all of you understand this because you find a group coming down a group moving up and again if you draw the invisible hydrogen atoms you'll find one hydrogen above one hydrogen atom below so all of you understand this uh, with respect to both the pi bonds it's trans so can i call this a trans trans isomer please respond can i call this a trans trans isomer now name this isomer cis trans it says cis with respect to this pi bond and trans with respect to this pi bond two hydrogen atoms and two alkyl groups the same side of the pi bond now this is above this is down so certainly this hydrogen is below and this hydrogen is up huh so you call this a cis trans isomer you call this a cis trans isomer and then i could have drawn now name this this compound the structure it starts with respect to this pi bond it starts with respect to this pi bond this above this below and this is cis so around this pi bond it cis around this pi bond it trans so this could be called a trans cis isomer it could be called a trans cis isomer So how many isomers? How many geometrical isomers I could explore? Four. So around every region of pi bond, you know, there could be a cis and a trans geometry. And again, you understand that this effect is not going to be additive; it's going to be uh, productive. So now, uh, with respect to every pi bond, with effect to every pi bond, there's going to be a cis and trans geometry. There's going to be a cis and trans geometry. Hana, I know this effect is not additive; it's productive. So, if there are n pi bonds, if there are n pi bonds, if there are n pi bonds, then number of geometrical isomers, the number of geometrical isomers will be two to the power n. If there are n pi bonds, if there are n pi bonds. The number of geometric isomers will be two to the power n. Clear enough? You know, in this case, n is equal to two, so you could have had four isomers. There is no doubt. You understand this? With n pi bonds, you can have two to the power n number of geometric isomers. Maybe you just want to know that n is the number of pi bonds around which or over which you can have geometric isomerism. So, in case you have a compound like this given, you just don't uh, end up counting the pi bond because you will not count this as three pi bond because you know around this pi bond, around this pi bond, there will be no geometric isomerism because it's a terminal alkene and two hydrogen atoms on the same carbon. So here you'll count number of pi bonds as two only. You'll count number of pi bonds as two only. Fine. Maybe if I further increase this chain, if I further increase this chain, then this will have this will have three pi bonds. Maybe this will have three pi bonds. See, yes or no? And now the total number of geometric isomerism will be eight. Two to the power three. Number of geometric isomers of this compound will be eight. So this case of uh, two four heptadiene is understood by.